Hello, everybody. Welcome to Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. I'm excited and I give thanks to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus for another opportunity He has given to us to be able to fellowship together and break the bread of life together. Now, quickly, I have two quick announcements before we run. The first one is, please, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go to YouTube and type Apostle Victor James. And pff, there are lots of teachings there that will be a blessing both to you and to your loved ones. And please press the subscription button. Just go to YouTube, type Apostle Victor James and press the subscription button. I'll be so encouraged. Thank you for doing so. God bless you in Jesus' name. Number two announcement. If you're a minister... Uh, in whatever capacity and whether you're a pastor, an evangelist, a bishop, an apostle, a prophet, a deacon, a deaconess, elder, choir master, intercessory leader, whatever you do in the body of Christ that God has given you grace to serve in, you, you need uh, not to work alone, number one. Number two, you need to be mentored in the gospel of Christ. If you want to be mentored in the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, that's something the Lord has called me to do. It's a gift of the grace of God that he has called me. The Lord came to me and said to me, I want you to mentor men and women that I'm going to send them to you from all over the world. Say, I want to mentor them for me. And number two, and provide spiritual covering for them. So if you seek a genuine spiritual covering, devoid of manipulations and all those things, just specifically for, for the work of the ministry and for the sake of the gospel of Christ. That is what the Lord has given to me as an assignment to do. Right here in Lagos, we meet myself and all my sons and daughters, you know, ministers. We meet every two Mondays of the month. Even if you are not in Nigeria, you are not in Lagos, you can still be a part of it because we tell, uh, we, 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 we put it live every two Mondays. In the fellowship so that everybody can join from all over the world all right um if you want to be a part of it and the lord is speaking to your heart to submit to me for my spiritual covering and leadership mentorship you know you can call uh, this number uh plus two three four eight zero three zero seven one eight zero zero six plus two three four Eight zero three zero seven one eight zero zero six. Look, you will be glad you did because I was born for this in this generation. Amen. Thank you so much for the announcement. God bless you in the name of Jesus. All right, let's hit the ground running. Um, the, the, I believe the Lord put this in my heart to encourage somebody, you know, from whatever it is. Because of the days in which we are living in. We are living in the days where people uh, are more or less becoming loveless. They are becoming loveless. And, and that is the situation of things, or that's the situation, uh, the situation of things going on in the world right now. So whatever is going on in the world should not happen to us. Should not be, we shouldn't be a part of it. If you understand what I mean. Because we're a peculiar people. We're a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A people that God has called out of darkness. The darkness that is in the world. Into the marvelous light of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, God has, is, is for his own family, you know, that we belong to. God has a different life called eternal life that only Jesus can give. God has that for us. That's what God has for us. And in that life, the love of God is our inheritance. Ooh, I wish somebody heard what I said. God's love is the inheritance of every born again Christian. God's love. So, I want to start by saying, I wrote it down here in my, um, in my note here. I wrote it down here in my note. I wrote, everybody can't love you. And you shouldn't expect everybody to love you. 
You, you know, a lot of Christians, I don't know how we got to that point. That we just assume that because we are born again, and we, we, are, we are now sons and the children of God, automatically, everybody must love me. Everybody must love you. you, you know? And the devil is using that to weaken so many Christians, to hurt Christians, you know, to damage our sense of, you know, sense of sonship, if you know what I mean, you know? The, the devil is using it to attack us. You know, and, you know, because everybody don't love you or a certain set of people do not love you, you now, the devil makes some Christians to now feel or think that that is God's position towards them. God doesn't love them. Now, I'm not saying that you have to keep fighting people and then if you do bad and the people will try to avoid you in order to avoid quarrel or fight, you not think that, uh, oh, they don't love you because it doesn't matter. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about our life in Christ. Because the life we have is not our own. It's the life of Christ. That's what the Bible said. We died. But the life we now have is the life that Jesus owns. It's Jesus' life that we are living as Christians. Now, this life, it is not automatic that everybody must love you. It is not. So, let me read it again. Everybody can't love you. Are you seeing that? And you are not supposed to expect everybody to love you as a child of God. You shouldn't expect that. There is nowhere in the scripture, in the Bible, where God expects that you should be loved. I mean, you should expect to be loved. Did you get that? Because we're going to see God's mind concerning this thing. Everybody can't love you. And you in return, you and I, as for me, I am not, to, I am not expected to position myself that everybody will love me or should love me. I'm not expecting everybody to love me. Are you seeing that? So, and I wrote, I said, if everybody loves you, if everybody loves you, it is a definite sign that something is wrong with you. If everybody loves you, it's a definite sign that something definitely is wrong with you. And so somebody says, well, why, why should that be? Why should that be? I should have everybody loving me because uh, I, I'm, I'm a good person. I do not offend people. I do not do bad. I do not do that. If, look at what Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verse 23, verse 26. The book of Luke chapter 6, verse 26. This is Jesus himself talking to his disciples. This is very important. Can you put it up? I hope you are not having challenge with this thing. You know, if not, let me just read it here. The Bible said in Luke chapter 6, all right, it's here. Luke 6, 26. Look at what, this is Jesus talking. He said, woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. That means it is a curse for anybody to be loved by everybody. It's a curse. You, you, there must be some area of compromise, a life of compromise that you are living. It, there must be a life of God that you are living that is not pleasing to God. I mean, there's a life that you are living that is not God's life and it's not pleasing to God. Everybody can love you. Even Jesus himself, God Almighty, with all the good, the Bible said everywhere he went, he went doing good. They, they so hated him, the hatred they had for Jesus ended at the cross, him being crucified. So Jesus said, woe to him. Can you put NIV translation, please, quickly? Because I have so many things to really put up, but let's let, let just run through that. NIV translation, quickly. Watch this. This is very important. So people need to stop being sensitive. Because this generation, the, one of the biggest problems of this generation is that this generation is too sensitive. Go and look at the, the way, the rate at which children, youths, young adults are committing suicide, killing themselves, and, vi and, uh, and filming it live on the, on the internet, on Facebook. Because they perceive that they are not loved in school. 
They are not loved at home. It is not everybody that will love you. And you are not supposed to expect that everybody should love you or will love you. There is nowhere in the Bible that God said you have to expect everybody to love you. Stop that. NIV says, what to you when all men speak well for you, of you? Put NLT or something, you know, so, so as to, to really bring the... He said, this is how they, 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 they lied to the false prophets. That's the life they live with the false prophets. I'm telling you. What, uh, uh, he said, what sorrow awaits you who are praised by the crowd? Everybody just singing your praise. Everybody just loves you. Something is definitely wrong with you. It is not everybody that started that church with you that will remain there as God begins to elevate that church. It is not everybody. By the grace of God, I pastor a fellowship called AVJ, Apostle Victor James Jesus Gospel Ministers Fellowship. It has become a worldwide movement of my sons and daughters from all over the world, including right here in Nigeria, in Lagos, where I live precisely. Yet, there are some who just don't like me, who just don't love me, who are no more with the fellowship. You see, but they, they are not being with the fellowship even though it doesn't make me happy, the fellowship has not died. The fellowship does not stop, has not stopped. Because this is the life of God. The fellowship is the life of God for men. Are you seeing that? So the Lord had to teach me that a long time ago. The Lord said to me, there is no way I ask that you should expect that everybody should love you. It's, you you got to know that. Alright, let's move on. So, like I said, you have to deliberately stop expecting people to love you. You see, when you begin to approach life, you know, from that, from this knowledge point of view of the scripture, you, you can never be pushed to the wall, so to speak, by the devil. The devil can't use hurt, H-U-R-T, to push you to the wall. No. He can't use disappointment to push you to the wall. Are you seeing what I'm saying? I mean, he can't use negativity to push. As long as the devil knows that you, are, you have harmed your mind with the right knowledge. That everybody can love you. That's the first thing. And that secondly, you are not told anywhere in the Bible to expect to be loved. No. Look at it. Luke chapter 6 again, in verse 36. Put a HCSB translation of it. Luke chapter 6, verse 36. Watch this. I want you to see this. Luke chapter 6, verse, th verse 36. 36, not 26. All right. This is still Jesus talking. Um, I mean, sorry, 35. <laughs> I didn't see that properly. Verse 35. All right. Jesus is talking to his disciples. He said, but love your enemies. That's what Jesus said. You know, for Jesus to call the person or the people your enemies, that means what you are getting from them is the opposite of love. Because that's what an enemy gives. The only thing an enemy can give is the opposite of love. Are you seeing that? But he said you love them. Love your enemies. Love, that's what Jesus said. Love your enemies. If they are your enemies, if Jesus used the word enemy for, their, for that person, for those people, that means what they are pushing out to you is not love. It's the opposite of love. Are you getting that? All right. So Jesus said, love your enemies. Do what is good and lend. Watch. Expecting nothing in return. So let's read it like this. Love your enemies. And then three dots. One, two, three dots. That means, you know, things. There are still words there. But we just keep them. Because of uh, 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 the point we're trying to make. But love your enemies. One, two, three dots. Expecting nothing in return. So you see, God's position for you and I is that you should love. I should love. Don't expect to be loved. 
Don't do that. There is no way you are told because you love somebody, you should expect them to love you back. That's why you are disappointed. That's why they are hurting you. The devil is using people to hurt you. Whatever you do, he said, do it as unto the Lord. Love people as though you are loving them for the sake of Jesus. Are you seeing him? Love them. Don't expect them to love you back. That way you can't be hurt. You can't be disappointed. You can't be, your heart cannot be wounded. Just love. Oh, glory be to God in heaven. Thank you, precious Father. You know, I have so many things here, but I got to skip them because of time. All right? You know, what God expects of, of us. So, because somebody will ask me, AVJ, hey, then what happened to my own sense of being loved? What happened to it? Am I just going to be like a robot? Nobody loves me. I'll just keep loving and loving. You know, that is not possible. You can't just keep loving and loving. Every created creature of God wants to be loved. Craved. Craves to be loved. There is nobody that doesn't want it to, to be loved. Even my dogs. If you have a dog in your house, show that dog love, that dog love. You'll be amazed what that dog will become to you like a friend. If I've seen a, a, a chicken, you know, I've seen a goat. I saw a goat on, inter, uh, on, on Instagram. A man so loved that goat and cared for that goat that the goat became like a dog to the man. Escorts the man, you know, uh, to the market, to, uh, to the mall. When the man is going for shopping. And anybody that wants to attack that man, the, the goat turns around to protect the man. I've never seen it before. Everything God created craves to be loved. Are you seeing that? But God said, you don't expect to be loved. You just love. So what happens to that part of us that God created to crave for love? God gave solution to it. In John chapter 3, verse 16, he said, For God so loved the world. You see, God now came with his own love for the world. It, it, it's not just you and me as believers. Everybody in the world, what, whoever craves for love, God came with his own love. Are you seeing that? So help meet, to help satisfy that love craving that he put in all of his creation. Are you seeing that? But uh, John chapter 3 verse 16, that's what he said in the King James. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. So God came into the world with his own love for everybody. God wants you to receive his love. Are you seeing that? So the day we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, concerning our salvation, we received, we accepted, we were given the love of God. So the craving, the place of craving to be loved that God put inside of every one of us, he, he brought, God gave his own love to help us fill that vacuum, that gap, that place. Somebody say, are you sure about it? I got to show you. This is very important. Watch this. In Romans chapter 5, verse 5. NIV translation. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. That's why you as a born again Christian, you can never say you are not loved. If you say or think or feel not loved, it is because you have not been taught the truth. As a born again Christian, you can never be without being loved. Anger telebata. Woo! You can never, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is bearing witness with my spirit right now. I can sense it in my spirit. No born again Christian can ever get to a point where they are not loved. And this love is a supernatural love. It's the highest dimension of love. Are you seeing that? So God said, you just keep loving. Love them. Don't worry whether they love you back or not. You love. I will love you for them. I will love you in return. If your father hates you, God said, don't worry about it. Love your father. I will love you. My love is available to you. If your mother hates you, don't hate your mother. Love your mother. 
my love is for you. If your brothers, your sisters, your uncle, your nephew, anybody, there are some ministers, my sons and daughters, that I lay hands on and help to come into the ministry and talk them about Jesus. Yeah, they've turned their back on me. You see, but I have chosen by knowledge never to feel unloved. So the devil can't get me to feel unloved. Because the love that I am made to expect is not a human love. It is God's love. So God, whoo, glory be to God. He said, I should keep loving. And don't worry about anybody loving me back. Why? Because he brought his own love for me. And God's love is the only thing that can satisfy. Alcohol can't satisfy. Cigarettes, drugs can't satisfy. Sex, having sex with different women cannot satisfy. Watching pornography cannot satisfy. Traveling from one country to the other on holiday cannot satisfy. Are you seeing what I'm saying? The only thing that can satisfy your heart is you receiving the love of God. So the Bible said in Romans chapter 5, verse 5, the NIV, NIV translation, it said, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has, God has poured his love. He has poured out his love. God has poured out, God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Every one of us that is born again, God brought his love and poured it into our heart. At the day we accepted, the very day we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and filled our hearts with his love. Glory be to God. You know, a lot of ministers have for years tried to make me feel bad, to make me feel unloved. And majority of it is because of envy, jealousy. I remember I went to preach in America one time. Um, precisely, I went to preach in, uh, uh, in Maryland. There's a pastor that invited me. I haven't seen him. I never met him before that time. Somebody told him about me and uh, uh, so he contacted me and said, you wanted me to come and speak for him. X, Y, Z person told, me, told him about me. I said, pastor, do you so, I'm sorry, I got to ask you this question. Do you know my teaching? What I teach, what I believe, my message? Uh, he said, are you not a man of God? You know, I said, please, please. I am not coming to go and be preaching about money. I'll be talking about uh, the powers of your father's house, the powers of the enemy, uh, marine spirit. Or, I, I don't have time for that. And then I'm not into prophesy, prophecy, you know, the kind of prophecy that, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, your. I'm in your living room right now. I'm seeing television in your room. I'm saying, no, I'm not, I'm not into that. So he said, it doesn't matter. You're a man of God. I said, okay, all right. So I went. The church was packed out. It was a night vigil. You know, they did all kinds of ceremony, all kinds of things. You know, finally, they gave me a microphone. You know, the, the service started by 10 p.m. They finally gave me a microphone about 12 or 12.30 a.m. You know, so I took the microphone and I began, I taught the people about Jesus, the gospel message about Jesus, the realities of our redemption that is contained in Jesus Christ and everything Jesus is to us and has done for us. The place caught fire, excitement, you need to see the burden, the, as though people were carrying burden, those bodies were taken off their shoulders. You see, the day you meet with, you truly meet with Jesus, the sign, one of the very first sign, yeah, is rest. Burdens of guilt, fear, condemnation, anxiety, all of that will be taken from you. You know, I was given just uh, 35 minutes to, to preach, to minister. I mean, I was flown there to America, in Maryland, to be given only 35 minutes to preach a night vigil. I said, it's okay. I go, I, I, and they had this big clock, you know. So I was watching and, you know, timing myself. Exactly 20 minutes I stopped. The church erupted. People will not allow me to go. They will not. And I, I said, look, I'm a man under authority. Your pastor is the authority here. I got to be under his authority as far as I'm in the church. And that's what I do everywhere I go. The pastor looked at me because the, the noise of 
continue, continue. He, he just couldn't resist it. So he, he, he stood up and said, Apostle, please continue. I went on, and then later I stopped again. The people, you know, so eventually the pastor, you know, just couldn't control the thing. I noticed that as I went on, the people, nobody slept. Everybody was awake, ready to hear the next thing that was going to come out of my mouth. Jesus is sweet. He's beautiful to teach. And when the people of God come to the knowledge of Jesus, they come alive. They come alive. Liberty is set loose in the middle, was set loose in the midst of the people of God. Are you seeing that? Just at the entrance of the knowledge of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what I was born for in this generation. Right after that, the man never invited me again. Bless his heart. Years later, a pastor that wanted, he said he, he has a friend that he wanted to introduce me to, to speak at the church. You know, it was this same pastor, you know. So when he got to me, tried to find out, that one told him, no, 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 I don't want Apostle James. I don't want him. So that one tried to find out, what did he do? What, happened? what did Apostle do? James do? Because he was curious, you know. Only for him to find out that I came there to preach revelation, knowledge, as though he himself was, does not study the Bible or does not know the Bible. I said, but how is that my fault? All he should have done was to become my friend. We could fellowship together, break the bread together. And then he could go and preach it in his church. Are you seeing that? So that he now hates me because of the depth of knowledge that is given to me by Christ does not mean I shouldn't love him. I love him. I, oh yes, I love him with all of my heart. Because the love of God that he poured in my heart has met that demand for love that my heart crave, craves for as a human being. Are you seeing that? Glory be to God. Thank you, precious Father. So he said, the love of God is poured in our heart. It's poured out. has been poured out in our heart. And he said, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the, by the Holy Spirit. So don't tell me you don't have, nobody loves you. Or you feel loveless. No, you don't. It's because you are walking by your feeling, not by the reality of the goodness of God's love poured that in our heart through Christ Jesus. It's because you have not been taught. And I know that as you are learning now, you are gaining confidence. You can wake up tomorrow morning. You don't have to feel it. You just know it. It's by knowledge. You know it. That you know that you know that you know God loves me. He has poured that his love that he loves me with into my heart. So I'm loved. Glory be to God. <laughs> and God will never disappoint. His own love will never end. Because he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So watch this. So what do we do now? What is required of you and I is that you need to learn about the love of God and to rely on it. That's what God demands of us. To learn about his love and to rely on that love. In 1 John, the Bible said in verse 4, chapter 4, verse 16, NIV translation. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. Watch this. Ooh, my time is fast spent. Time is running. I got to push this thing real quick. Amen. Because this is blessing me, man. I'm telling you, it's blessing me. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. And so we know God wants you to know. You must know. Take time out to know. Go for knowledge. Don't just read Bible. Learn. Seek revelational knowledge of the epistles concerning the love of God for us. And that's why the Holy Ghost has brought me to teach this. He said, and so we know. And what we know, guess, watch this. We rely on. We know and rely on. What do we know and rely on? The love of God, the love God, the love God, the love God has for us. He said we know and we rely, we depend on the love that God has for us. <laughs> That's why I cannot be stranded. 
I don't feel bad. There's never a time I feel bad. I never feel helpless. I, I don't feel hopeless. It's not possible. Because I've come to know. And by the things, the, the knowledge of the things I know concerning God's love for me, it has become my reliance. See, that's why the Holy Ghost is asking me to teach this. That you are sick does not mean God does not love you. That you don't have money in the bank to pay your bills right now does not mean God does not love you. That nobody is around you now to pat you on the back does not mean you are not loved. You have God's eternal love for you. In you. You got to know it. Let it become a knowledge. Don't let it become, just be domiciled. No, let it become a walking knowledge. A W-O-R-K-I-N-G. Walking knowledge in your heart and your mind. Are you seeing that? So anytime the devil wants to use somebody to make you feel unloved, push back through knowledge and tell that devil, tell that condition, tell that situation, you can't make me feel unloved. Because it is too late. God has poured his love into my heart. And God's love is the greatest love. There's no love like it. Woo! Alright, so you see that. He said, and so we know and rely on the love that God has for us. So, as you journey through this life as a child of God, what God expects of you in the name of Jesus Christ it's in Jude chapter 1 verse 21. Jude chapter 1 verse 21. As you learn about God's love and rely on it, this is what God expects of you. Are you seeing what I'm saying? It, it, the NIV translation of Jude chapter 1. Jude has only one chapter anyway. Verse 21. Look at it. It's, this is very important. This will blow your mind. <laughs> I'm telling you. Look at this. This is God speaking to you and I. Keep yourselves in God's love. In God's love. As you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. To bring you to eternal life. As, you, as we wait for the return of Jesus. He said, keep yourself in God's love. Put King James, please. Put King James. Woo, glory be to God. Hallelujah. I was born for this, I'm telling you. The, I, when it comes to Jesus and everything he has done for us, the reality of the redemption in Christ Jesus, that's why I was born. That's why the Lord allowed me to be born into this generation. And he told me, I can't forget it, years back. He said, I'm sending you back to the body of Christ. Go and teach about me. Teach them about me. So it excites me. I'm fulfilling my call, my ministry. Look at this. He said, keep yourself in the love of God. He didn't say you should keep yourself in your love for God. You see, in the Old Testament, they, kept, they were to keep themselves in their love for God. So, anytime they fail God, their love for God dwindles. Their love for God wobbles. Their, the confidence of their love for God is withdrawn from them by the, by the situation, by their situation, their circumstance and their condition. So God said, look, I'm going to reverse this thing. I mean, I'm going to change this thing. I'm going to change the order and reverse it. Now, God does not want us, like in the Old Testament, to keep ourselves in, he, in our love for him. No, God wants us to keep ourselves deliberately Consciously, consciously, in his love for us. Are you seeing it? So, no matter what I feel or how I feel when I wake up in the morning, he said, I should keep myself. I should maintain my course. I should make sure I remain conscious in my heart and mind that God loves me. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Even in your stupidity, God wants you Never to lose consciousness of his love for you. Because as long as you remain in God's love for you, the wicked one cannot penetrate you. To go to God in prayer will not be difficult. Condemnation will never dance around you. Do you understand what I'm saying? The devil will never be able to make a mess of your faith. That's why 
Once you become born again, the first fruit, manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit is love. Woo! Woo! Glory be to God. The first manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit is love. He said, keep yourselves in the love of God. That's what Galatians chapter 5 says. I think it's verse 25. Uh, you know, let's just, I didn't plan to use that. But let's just use it quickly. Let's do that. Let's, oh, glory be to God. Time is good. Quickly, if you can just get it. Let's, 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 let me just show you. The fruit of the spirit. The, 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 the um, uh, drop down. Just keep dropping down. Maybe who's we'll, we'll eventually. All right, verse 22. Yeah, watch this. But, but the fruit of the spirit, the first fruit of the spirit is love. Love. <laughs> Come on now, somebody say love. All right, what I need you to do is this. Say, God loves me. Mention your name. God loves Victor James. God loves AVJ. Mention your own name. No, say it convincingly to you. God loves AVJ. God loves AVJ. God loves AVJ. You see, so when you wake up in the morning, don't judge your relationship or fellowship with God based on your love for him. God doesn't want that in the New Testament. He wants you to always judge your fellowship and relationship, your walk with him based on his love for you. He will never fail. He will, nev he will never be unfaithful. His love will never, never, ever diminish. No. The Bible says God is love. So how will he, how will God's love diminish for you? That means God himself has to diminish in nature. No, it's not possible. God forbid. He is not a man to lie. Neither the son of man to repent. Glory be to God. He said, I am the Lord, I change not. He said, with him there is no variableness. Neither any shadow of turning. God does not vary. He's consistent. He wants you to accept his love for you. The reality of his love. God loves you. He wants you to know he loves you. And that he wants you to rely, depend on that his love for you. Stop depending on your love for God. Look, you can't be wiser than God. You and I cannot be wiser than him. You know, somebody said one time, he said, but Jesus said, Jesus said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. Jesus was talking to his disciples or the people under the law because the New Testament had not come into play yet. The New Testament was still buried inside his blood and his blood was still in his physical body. Don't you get it? The New Testament is in the blood of Jesus. And the New Testament, the blood has not been shed yet. There cannot be a testament without the shedding of blood. And that blood that will bring forth the New Testament was still inside Jesus' physical body. So there is no way he could tell them to depend on the love of God for them. But he, Jesus, did not, you can't find anywhere. Jesus said, I love the Father. No. No. What Jesus will say, rather, is that the Father loves the Son. Jesus had a perfect revelational knowledge of the truth of the Father's love for him. So when the devil showed up and said, if you are truly the Son of God, turn this stone into bread. Jesus looked at the devil and said, look, I don't have to impress God. I don't have to impress him. I don't have to turn any stone to anything. Because the Father loves me. Look, Jesus has not done any sign and signs and wonder. He has not even done any good. He has never helped anybody before. But at the river Jordan, the heaven parted open. And the Father spoke. He said, this is my beloved son. This one, I love him with all my heart. With everything within me. The Father's testimony came for Jesus. This is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. It was after that declaration of the Father's love for Jesus. The devil came to tempt him. So it was too late for the devil. That's why he couldn't win the temptation over Jesus. Because Jesus' reliance was on the Father's unshakable love for him. So when the New Testament started, it became the pattern of life. The pattern of living. The love of God for me. So John now came. He said, and we, we, now we know. We know that the order has changed. We do not only know it, we rely on it. What do we rely on? The love of God for us. So Jude said, keep yourself in that love. Woo! 
Anytime the devil wants to make you feel God doesn't love you, tell yourself, God loves me. <laughs> Maybe you have gone through a divorce. Let me tell you, God loves you. I'm telling you, if you are watching me from prison, anywhere in the prison, whether in the hospital, whether you have done abortion, whether you have just been jolted or jilted, whichever, whether you have just been disappointed by somebody you have invested so much into, let me remind you, God loves you. And he wants you to keep yourself in that is love. Let his love heal your heart. Let it remove the heart. Let it remove the disappointment. Let it help you to move forward. To continue to live. Don't let the devil drag you back. The love of God is the healing power of God for you and I. Glory be to God in heaven. Hallelujah. Learn to always rely. Fall back on God's love for you. <laughs> and don't let anybody boast to you in this New Testament. You see what is happening to me? The kind of prosperity I have? You see what I have? It's because of my love for God. Tell that person that's a lie. Don't let anybody harass you with his love or her love for God. Because I know that there are people in the body of Christ, including ministers, who try to threaten other believers with their love for God. The way this boy loves God. Don't let anybody threaten you. That's a lie. God does not count on anybody's love for him. He counts on his love for us. And because of his love for us, that's why we are able to love him. So, glorify his love for you. Because it is in resting in God's love, you are able to draw, draw the strength to love. To love God, to love your neighbor. Nobody, you can, nobody can love their neighbor. I'm telling you. Nobody. So, God had to love us. Put that his love in our heart to empower us. To love. Are you seeing that? Look at what the Bible said in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, the King James Version. Quickly, 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. Glory be to God. So don't let anybody tell you, look, I just bought a car. Look at what is happening in our ministry. The kind of money we have now. It is because of my love for God. That's a lie. That's a man that is speaking out of ignorance. You know, that's ignorance speaking. You know, God will never. Nobody will ever come before the presence of God to boast. In 1 Corinthians, that's what Paul said in chapter 1. He said, no flesh shall be able to boast in his presence. Because everything now in the New Testament is because of Jesus. Are you seeing that? All right. 1 John chapter 4 verse 19. He said, we love God. We love him. We love him. Yes. But look at this. Because he first loved us. We love God. That's true. We are to love him, yes. He said, because he first loved us. So, don't let anybody come and boast about his or our love for God. You see, if you, are, if you are not loving God, it's because you have not accepted his love for you. He loves you. He loves you. So, at what point did God be began to love us? At what point? For you to know how committed God's love is to you and I. At what point did God begin to love us? Is it that when you are better, when you have been able to put your life together, you know, somebody say, put your life together and, and, and love God and see God do things for you. That, I don't know where they got that from. If you can put your life together for you to be able to love God, then God will love you. Then you don't need him. Believe me. If you can put your life together by yourself in the absence of Jesus, then you don't need him. But you and I will never be able to get to a point in life where we don't need Jesus. He is the answer to all things. So at what point did God begin to love us? Is it when we've gotten everything together? Is it when we have become a good boy, a good man, a good girl, a good woman, a good worker, a good master, a good servant, a good follower? Is it when you have gotten it together? That God now began to love your God. Say, now I can love you. Look at this. I don't want to answer you from my head. Because my opinion does not count. Watch this. In Romans chapter 5 verse 8. NIV translation. 
Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Let me show you when God chose to actually begin to love us. Woo! Look at this. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God demonstrated that he loves us. The Bible said here, but God demonstrated his own love. He de he God decided to choose to demonstrate the actual time. God decided to choose to demonstrate that he loves us. Look at it. Was in this. Why we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. God decided. Look, I love you. God decided to, to show us. He, I love you. He, he decided to show me. AVJ, Apostle Victor James. He loves me. He loves me. God has, look, God is mad about me. God is crazy. Crazily in love with me. And he decided to demonstrate it. To show it. To prove it. To me, guess when? Guess when? When I was still a sinner. When I was still a bad guy. When I was still a bad boy. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Look, that prostitute on your street. God loves, God is immensely in love with that prostitute. God is immensely in love with that bad guy, with that drug guy. He wants you. God wants you. Where, what? I don't care whatever, wherever you find yourself right now. He wants you. He loves you too much. To demonstrate that is love. While we were yet sinners, he asked Jesus, his son, to go and die for us. He didn't wait that we should get ourselves together, our lives together, get all things together, be righteous, be clean, and then his son will go and die for us. What would we need him for? Are you getting that? How much more now that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? How much more now that you are a child of God? The love of God is even deeper and better. <laughs> Look, from the day you and I accepted Jesus Christ, we, are it, we became eternally trapped in God's love. And God himself became eternally trapped to loving us. Why we were yet sinners, his enemies, we hated God. We did everything and said everything against God. He loved us and went, went all the way to demonstrate this is love by giving his son to die for us. How much more now that we are his? Woo! If there's anything greater than dying, Jesus would have gone to do it to show us he loves us. The love of God, let me close with this, came with a guarantee. Abadaga. I'm going to say it again. The love of God for you and I came with, as a matter of fact, let me put it like this, came with an eternal guarantee. God's love for us will last as long as God is still alive. And you know that God is life. <laughs> I'm telling you. Wow. Let me close with this. In Romans chapter 8, verse 35, NLT translation. Romans 8, 35, the NLT translation. Watch this. Woo, glory be to God. I'm telling you, this place is surrounded with the sweetness of the Holy Spirit. You don't need to do special fasting to enter into the love of God and His workings for you. He loves you whether you fasted or not. He loves you whether you, whatever, he loves you. Celebrate his love for you. In Romans chapter 8, verse 35, he said, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Can anything, name the thing, whatever you can imagine, can anything, yeah, can anything ever make God stop loving us? Can anything? Can I didn't say it, the Bible said question mark. Can anything ever separate us? Make God stop loving us? Can anything? Oh glory, Badaya Basa, Izuaga, Grote Saga. 
Can anything, can anything, nothing, 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 Woo. nothing. That's why he gave Jesus his love for us. Nothing. He said, does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble? Your challenges are not a sign that God does not love you anymore. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it is the demonstration of God's love that you are witnessing. That there is no money in your pocket, no money in your bank account, yet there is food on your table. It's a demonstration of his love. Does it mean God no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity? That you love so your loved one. Does that mean God doesn't love you anymore? That's why he made you to lose your loved ones. You lost your husband or you lost your wife or you lost your parent. No. His love is still ever abiding. He said, or oh, oh, because we are persecuted, people hate us. People don't want to come to our fellowship anymore. People don't want to be our friends again. Or your church, your ministry, is still very small. It shows that God does not love you. Please. That's a lie of the devil. Or because you are hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death. Is that does that mean that God doesn't love you? What are you talking about? Let me show you this. God punish the devil. Now I'm upset at those lies of the devil. Drop down to verse 38. 38 and 39. God punish the devil. Watch this. Your condition can never unseat God's love for you. Never. Woo, that one came out from my heart. Your condition can never unseat God's love for you. You need to write that down. Write it down. And don't ever, don't ever forget it. Your situation, your condition, your challenges, your persecution, those persecutions against you, that people don't want to walk with you anymore. That they don't want to come to your church again as a man of God. That they, won't, they, don't, they don't even want to help you financially anymore. Your condition can never unseat God's love for you. Never. Look at this. Verse 38. He said, And I am convinced. In King James, I am persuaded. That nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Nothing can make God stop loving you. Nothing can make God stop loving a VJ. He said, neither death nor life. Woo. <laughs> as far as I'm alive, I can never get to a point where God will stop loving me. Nothing. He said, neither angels, even angels, cannot convince God to stop loving me. He said, no demons. You know, it's unfortunate the way we preach about demons, evil spirit, powers of darkness, powers of the enemy, powers of the spirit, spirit of water, spirit inside water, marine spirit. All the, we preach and, and celebrate them in an ungodly way for no reason. They, they cannot do anything to make God stop loving me. They cannot influence you enough to make God so loving me or loving you. Respond to the love of God. You will see that their grip over you will fall apart. He said, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, nor even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Woo! Next verse. Verse 39. Let me stop here. <laughs> the Holy Ghost sent me to encourage somebody. Let me stop here. I'm sure somebody is encouraged. He said, no power in the sky above. That means principalities. Witches, wizard, flying. There is nothing they can do to make God stop loving me. Even if they make you misbehave, they can't still stop God loving you. And the love of God will restore you. For he restored my soul. Look at this. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation. There is nothing created. <laughs> that can ever be able to separate us from the love of God 
that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know how it was revealed? Jesus went to the cross to die for us. That's how God revealed his love for us. I love you so much. I gave my son to go and die for you. How do you pay for that? What can you compare with that? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I take authority over every satanic lies trying to bring you down, slow you down, rubbish your faith by lying to you that nobody loves you. I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. I ask that by the Holy Ghost you become energized, strengthened with might by the Holy Ghost in your inner man. I ask that God, by the Spirit of God, open your consciousness, the eye of your spirit, to a fresh understanding, revelation of his love for you. God loves you. He loves you beyond description. He loves you and I beyond description. That is what has always kept me going. Even when I get to the end of myself and I seem to be confused and it looks as if I'm my heart is overwhelmed. Suddenly I step aside within myself and I remind myself, God loved me. God loves me. And his love for me came with a guarantee. Woo, hallelujah. Eternal guarantee. God is love. So his love for me will remain as, it will remain as long as God remains. Thank you, Father. You cannot be hopeless. Then that can you be loveless in life. No. God loves you. If you are trusting God to be married for a life partner, keep yourself in the love of God. Let, it, let his love fill your heart until that man comes, until that woman comes. He loves you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Just thank him. Go ahead and thank him for his love. His love is real. When you learn to know his love and rely on it, keeping yourself in it, you will experience it fresh every day. His love is real. The love of God. <laughs> Perfect love that casts out fear. That's the goodness of his love. When you accept God's love, I'm telling you, you will not be afraid. Anytime you want to talk to God, you will talk to him. You won't apologize before you start talking to God. Because you know he has this unconditional love for you that came with guarantee. It will never expire. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, we never end our broadcast without giving everybody the opportunity to show us love by giving to us, by supporting us financially. You know, let the, Lord, the love of God in your heart, let it speak to your heart right now. And let God, through love, use you to help and support us financially. I, as Apostle Victor James, the one that is sent to, the, to this generation with the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. I need money. I need help. I need financial supporters for me to keep preaching and sending these things. You know, a lot of people don't know that these things cost us money. You know, so I'm asking you to help. Help sponsor and finance us. And I believe that the Lord will bless you for it. So right now, let me encourage you to take up an offering. A seed faith or a support, a financial support. If this teaching has been a blessing to you, send it to somebody and you to help us financially. In Jesus' name, thank you and God bless you. I pray for everyone that is giving right now. Holy Spirit, I pray that you help them. Father, bless their finances. In Jesus' name. Don't say, Apostle Victor James, AVJ is not talking to me. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Let the Lord use you. No matter how small, no matter how big, how large, you give it, you know, some of us are out to teach the truth, to help and benefit the body of Christ. Help us financially. Wherever you are, you can use our giving platform. You know, if you are in Nigeria, you can use either our Zenith Bank, 100-1488-167, or Access Bank, 14-333-73574, or Guarantee Trust Bank, 001 -6864121. Or if you are outside of Nigeria, whether you are in Canada, in America, in, uh, in Hong Kong, Australia, South Africa, you are in Ghana, you are in Kenya, or you are in Dubai, you know, Qatar, you are in Turkey, or you are in London, anywhere in Britain, 
you know, in UK, or you are anywhere in Europe, Germany, Holland, France, wherever you are, even in the Balkans, let the Lord use you to help and finance us. You know, so you can use our international giving platform. Uh, it is, you can Google it or go to Play Store and download Guarantee Trust Bank Nigeria. Guarantee Trust Bank. The SWIFT code, the SWIFT code is G T B I N G L A, and the dollar account is zero zero one six eight six four one four five. The Great British Pound account is 0016864169. And the Euro account is 0016864179. Thank you for supporting us financially. The Lord bless you and keep you until we see you again. Or I come your way next time. This is Apostle Victor James. Guess what I'm about to do? I am signing out. God bless you. Bye bye. <laughs>